This video will go over how to use software autofocus in LASX. To skip ahead to different sections, please see the timestamps below in the description. Software autofocus works with your motorized Z to run a Z stack and identifies the area of best focus. There are two versions of autofocus, best focus and high speed autofocus. On this system, I only have high speed autofocus, so that's what I will demonstrate. The good news is that best focus works similarly, but is much easier to use. To access the autofocus panel, click the high speed autofocus or regular autofocus panel in the top part of your window. That will open a autofocus window. Under focus system, you have several choices on this system. It might not be the same for yours. The top option here is high speed autofocus. If you only have best focus, that's where that will show up. So if you've selected high speed autofocus, a channel will pop up in your light path on the top right corner, allowing you to customize your autofocus settings. If you're using best focus, you will not have this option, and most people will use the first channel in their acquisition as the autofocus channel. So under autofocus, I have the option of choosing all of my different contrast methods. So even if in the end you are using fluorescence for acquisition, you might want to choose a transmitted light, either bright field or phase method to do the focusing because it's usually faster and less photo bleaching. But in this case, I've set it up exactly the same as my acquisition, which is in the FITZE channel. Now, if I go back to my autofocus window, you can now select between optimize and user defined. So optimize will be just some generic settings, which by default, it's usually optimized for speed. I like to go into user defined and either choose global or local. For the range, it depends on my sample. If it's fairly flat, then I will choose local. If it's thicker or wavy, then I will choose global. And usually I look through something around 20 to 40 microns, though it varies a lot depending on your specimen. Next, for the precision, high speed means fewer Z slices and high accuracy means more Z slices. So usually I go with something in the middle and that gives me a good result. And you do want to choose wide field imaging for your optimization. To test your settings, go ahead and click the auto focus button in the bottom left hand corner. It will run a quick Z stack. You can see it came up with 23 and the image that it ended up choosing was in focus. Now it doesn't keep that Z stack. It only shows it to you temporarily. And just for fun, I'm gonna go to high speed and let's do autofocus again. And there it only did eight Z stacks, but since I was pretty much within range, it did a pretty good job. But you do wanna think about the fact that across your sample, you might have a bigger variation than 20. So you could keep the speed at high, but also increase your local range such that you have a better chance of getting an in-focus image. Now let's see how autofocus works in Navigator or also when we add time-lapse. So there are two additional buttons on the autofocus channel that are available to you. One is time-lapse and the other is stage. So if you click T to add time lapse, you can go to the autofocus panel and click the time lapse and you can then choose to do an autofocus for only the first cycle, every cycle, or every nth cycle. Now similarly, if you go to stage, you also have the option of running an autofocus on the first position only, every position, or every nth position. So let's go ahead and just based on our settings, actually I'm gonna increase this to about 40 microns to get a bigger range. And then I will randomly pick three areas. I'm gonna put them close together just to make it easier. And then I will go ahead and hit start. So you can see that the autofocus did a pretty nice job of finding the focus and taking an image at each of those positions. 
One new feature starting with LASX 3.6 Navigator is the on-demand autofocus points. So in addition to all the options that I've listed or talked about under the stage experiment button, you can now also tell Navigator where to run autofocus. So the button is right next to your focus map point, so it's called autofocus point. So instead of telling it to run it every other well, or you can tell it the exact area that you want it to run the autofocus. So you can just think of it as a more customizable autofocus feature that isn't so regimented. Now remember that autofocus isn't like focus map. It will hold the autofocus point or point of focus until it encounters a different autofocus point or command. So unlike the focus map, which intelligently interpolates focus between focus map points, it is much more one-dimensional. And I would use it for these individual points or smaller areas, such as in well plate experiments. And if you are doing a tile scan or a mosaic, then I would use the focus map for that. So please see the focus map tutorial for instructions on how to set up a focus map. You can also run autofocus with AFC, adaptive focus control, which is the hardware autofocus feature that we have on certain DMI-8 microscopes. So under autofocus, you can go to AFC plus autofocus and this will give you the same settings and also lets you control the AFC. So for instructions on how to use AFC, please see our AFC tutorial. Combining both AFC and autofocus is especially useful for long-term time lapses, samples moving in and out of focus where you have to keep searching for the sample, and other challenging applications.